Billy Name, Billy Name, uh, Billy Linick, who changed his name to Billy Name in the, when, during the Velvet Underground period. Um, he was the manager of the factory, and he was um, sort of an equivalent to Gerard in many ways. He was very good looking. Um, he was he had this, the new look, but, you know. and uh, he loved Andy. Um, he, he, I think that they had a very very brief little liaison dangereuse at the beginning of the time they were together it lasted probably for a week or two but that's okay because it wasn't like a, no one rejected each other they just had a happy coming together and then that's good we're gone and he relied upon Billy very much and Billy was very reliable he lived in the factory he, he was the only person who was allowed to live there and uh, and he was the, the gatekeeper the key man and, the, and everything and uh, in those early days before the life ravaged him he was just extraordinary. I mean, he was part of the Judson Dance Company. He was a dancer. He had all the incredible balance of that. He was closely associated with and close friends with those people at the Judson. That was a, a door into another world that he took Andy into. Um, and uh, he became also a great photographer. I would argue that Billy Name is one of the great photographers of the 60s in terms of capturing the atmosphere of that scene. Oh, there's a great one of Andy Warhol and Jasper Johns at Henry Gutzola's apartment at that party for Dolly, with Liz's behind. 64. Jackie's. This was at the Costello Gallery, Baby Jane Holzer. Andy and Gerard at an opening. It's one of my first photos that I really liked a lot because it had a look to it. Yeah. Little boxes. Andy. Jackie Kennedy is again. They're amazingly haunting when you see them in real. They're only like this size. They weren't done large. They were just done, you know, 16 by 20. Uh -huh. And when you see them in real, they are just hauntingly beautiful. They're in like deep tones of blue. And more Andy and factory, silver factory. Imagine living and working in a place like that. It's so cool, isn't it? See, here's the two bathrooms. So this is, this is before I made the second one into a dark room even. So this is really early before I finished all the silvering. Because eventually I made the, the second bathroom into my dark room. I love this Andy on the phone. It's so hot. I mean, talk about contrast. <laughs> this is like 64 too, isn't it? Yes, it is. No, it's actually 65 actually because this was during the time we did the horse movie. People write their names on the phone. Yeah. Is that already there when you guys no. the phone? Oh, no, no. The phone was black, all black when we had it installed. Okay. But see, when the guy would come to collect the coins and replace the box, he'd take the silver one and put a new black one in. So then I, I would eventually silver it over again. <laughs> but yeah, people just wrote all over the place. Because we didn't have, yeah, there's the, and there's the negative, That's positive really and negative. Cool. Isn't that cool? That's very cool. I love to do that kind of stuff. And there you have the uh, Tokyo catalog, it's the called. Tokyo F book. <laughs> <laughs> the Silver Billy. Fuckery. Thank you. Well, thanks for doing it because. That's great. You know, I, I know I have information in me from my experience that nobody else knows. And I think doing this type of document, recording this along with the images, is probably something people can use for research in future years to keep the real focus of what actually was the Warhol factory rather than the uh, 
newspaper version or the uh, people who write about it who weren't there and don't know about it. So, you know, it's a prime source. I was aware, we were aware at the factory what we were. We could feel the power. We could feel the dynamic of the vitality of the whole thing being the hot spot in Manhattan, of the center of the art world, but power that comes with it also. And people say, well, did you know, they asked me, did you know what it would become historically speaking? And I say, no, we didn't think of what it would become historically speaking, I knew it was important. but we knew what it was at the time that it was the premier art spot flashpoint in New York art culture at that time and everything that came with it. We, we consciously knew all that stuff. But I really didn't have an intent to document. I, I was just a photographer or an artist who Andy gave a camera to. And so I mastered the camera and used it for, for my artwork, you know? And it just, where I did it, became, it became documentation because the factory became such a historical event. Well,